How do you feel after graduating college knowing you weren't going to use your degree? Anyone who ever bullied you in high school apologized for it. How did you go from a toxic relationship to a healthy relationship? Advice on taking care of your mental health. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Maddie. I make a ton of fitness and lifestyle content over here on my YouTube channel. I also do a ton of fitness related content, health and fitness things over on my Instagram if you guys wanna go check that out, as well as on my TikTok, which is literally the same as my Instagram. So lots of fun, relatable lifestyle and fitness content over here. In today's video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different that I have not done in a while. I am going to be doing a get ready with me little Q&A chit chat kind of thing. Told you guys to ask me questions, advice, anything over on my Instagram. So I'm going to be answering all those questions today. I got quite a bit. Um, I got some advice questions. I got some questions about my business, my fitness journey, things like that. And I don't think I've done one of these in literally like a year, year and a half. So definitely is past due, we need to do this, we need to chit chat, we need to catch up because there are some life changes that I've had and I'm here to tell you guys and I'm here to give you guys some advice and any questions you may have. Everything is going to be anonymous on here just due to privacy reasons um, and yeah, so super fun doing these. I would like to do these once a month. This is just like a little chit chat girl thing, get ready with me. I always get questions about my makeup and like what I do and stuff so I thought it would just be fun to like get ready with you guys while answering questions. I just do a little two-in-one type of thing. So without any further ado, let's get into today's video. So I have all the questions and everything written down on my phone. I'm sipping on a Lonnie New Cherry Slush. This is like one of my favorite flavors. So let's get into it. Um, already moisturized and everything. I'm going to start off with like primer. I go back and forth. I'm just trying to like get rid of these primers. This is the Pure Minerals Correcting Primer and then this is the Infallible Matte Pro Primer. I literally think I have like none left of this so throw that away but I'm just trying to get rid of this right now. Um, like I said the Infallible Pro Mattifying Primer um, is what I'm going to be using today all over my face. So let's go ahead and start with the first question. So Oh, this is a good one. Um, how do you feel after graduating college knowing you weren't going to use your degree? It's actually a really good question. So um, as you guys know, I did not know that I wasn't going to use my degree until going into my last year of college. So I was on my, I graduated in three years instead of four, please keep that in mind. So in the end of my second year of college is when I kind of decided to start my business. I was going to be entering my third and final year of college. And that's when I started my business. And I knew that I always wanted a backup plan, um, which was my degree. That's, I mean, obviously the thoughts of like dropping out and quitting. And I don't want to say taking the easy way out because there's nothing wrong with dropping out of college and pursuing something else. But for me, I knew that it was always a goal of mine to accomplish college and be a first generation um, you know, college student in my family. And I just really wanted to have that accomplishment and have a degree. So I knew finishing college was something that I needed to do. So I ended up just starting my business at the end of my college, or the last of my college career. And for a while it was kind of weird knowing that I wasn't going to be using my degree. Um, Especially telling family like, oh yeah, I just got a degree from San Diego State in criminal justice, but I'm not using it. Like, and the topic of when you're graduating is, oh, what are your post-graduation plans? Grad school, job, what are you gonna do type of thing? And I just, you know, would come out and tell people, I'm not using my degree, I'm gonna go and pursue my business and continue pursuing my business and I have this degree to fall back on if I need to, but it's just not where my heart and where my passion is right now. And I didn't want to spend the money on grad school Keep in mind, I paid for school on my own. I had financial aid, I had grants, um, I had a little bit of loans, but pretty much paid for it on my own. And I did not want to invest the money into going to grad school if I knew I wasn't going to pursue a career in that and I wasn't going to love it. And I love learning about criminal justice and I love learning about that kind of stuff, but I just knew it's not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life and it's not what I saw myself doing. It was a little weird at first telling people, I guess, is the answer that I am going to give. Um, but I did kind of go through, like, I don't really know I saw this on TikTok and a lot of people were talking about it and then I kind of reflected on it and realized that I had went through something similar. I kind of went through this like post-graduation depression and once I graduated college, all of my friends who graduated with me were talking about their post-graduation plans, how they're going to grad school, all these great grad schools they got accepted to, these great internships they're doing, um, or these great jobs they just landed. And here I was sitting there at graduation 
talking with everyone and saying, oh, I'm gonna continue with my business. And you know, from an outsider's point of view, some people may think like, oh, that doesn't make her money or that's a small business, it's not an awesome goal. Like she went to college for no reason, she just got a degree for no reason. And I hate when people say that call I wasted my time going to college because at one point in my life, I was so passionate about what I was doing. I was so passionate about going to college. I loved criminal justice and it's what I wanted to do. But later on when I was pursuing my degree, you know, things change. You you grow older. I went to college when I was 18. I was graduating when I was 21. Like things change and your interests change and that's okay. And I didn't want people to think that I wasted my degree. And so it was a little weird telling people, you know, or a little, I don't want to say weird, but a little, I don't know. I kind of felt out of place because I wasn't doing anything that involved my degree. You know, if I had a business degree, it'd be different, but I had a degree in criminal justice so it was very different. Um, but I had a little bit of this depression because, you know, I still had friends who were going to be finishing their last year of college because I graduated early. Watching my friends go back to college and go to the gym together and go to these parties and do all these fun things was kind of like FOMO to me. And I got a little depressed and I was like, wow, like I, I'm done with school. Like I'm not enjoying those fun things. I don't get that last year of college. You know, I did my last year of college online. So I didn't get the whole last year experience. I didn't get to do all that. So I felt a lot of FOMO for a while. And then I just had to really kick myself into gear and realize like, Maddie, you graduated with a degree in three years. You literally have all your debt paid off. You are debt free. You are doing what you love. You are running a business. You are influencing others. You're an influencer. You get to motivate people every day. You're coaching people online. Your life is good and this is where you are meant to be right now don't feel sorry for yourself and don't feel like you're missing out on something because this is where you need to be right now. So that was kind of hard for me too, um, just going through that whole like post-graduation depression and FOMO feeling. And I feel like it's very common because I saw on TikTok other people talking about how they were going through the similar thing too. So I feel like it's very similar when you graduate college, you kind of go into the, the realization of, oh shoot, this is the real world. I need to get my shit together and I either need to get a real person, a real, you know, grown adult job or I need to, in my case, continue growing my business and spend my time wisely doing that. And it's like for so long, you go to school for so long, that's all you know, like education is all you know and going to school is what you know. So it was kind of hard and hard pill to swallow when you realize like you're out in the real world and you're really on your own now. So that was a really long answer, um, but I am using the it Cosmetic Bye Bye Foundation. This is the full cover moisturizer, the oil-free matte one. So um, I do like the e.l.f. one better though, which I have here. Um, which is the camo cream. Um, actually, I think I'm gonna use this one now that I think about it. I'm gonna use the camo cream today. Anyway, um, so moving on to the next question. What is your biggest accomplishment slash thing you are proud of? Um, so I feel like there's kind of like two things that I'm proud of. Like definitely my biggest accomplishment and thing that I'm proud of is, you know, graduating college and getting a degree, but I'm looking at my mirror up here. Um, but I also want to say that one of my other biggest accomplishments is starting my own business at 20 and becoming an LLC within a year. Like I am literally a company. I'm not in the small business genre or group anymore, which is great. I have nothing, nothing against small businesses. Like I still consider myself a small business sometimes, um, but I'm actually an LLC. I'm a, I'm a company. Like I'm not a small business anymore. That's a huge step, you know, getting away from the sole proprietorship and small business world and branching out to being your own company is a big deal. So that's a huge accomplishment for me. I have only had my business for a year and a half now and I became an LLC within a year of owning my business. And like I said, I also, you know, started a business and was still going to college at the same time. Ask me now how I did it. I don't know because I don't think if I was still in college, I would could be running my business and dedicating all this time like I am now. Um, so definitely my two biggest accomplishments, getting my degree and then starting my company and becoming an LLC within a year. Next question is how do you record at the gym? Girl, I struggle and always feel like the angle is always off and people stare. So I've been going to my gym that I go to now for a year and a half now. Like I switched gyms when I graduated school or when I moved home from going to college. But honestly, my gym is like, I go in the morning and everyone like is pretty like used to me filming now. Everyone knows that I film, so no one really like bothers me anymore. And then there's other people who film there too. There's a couple guys who like are bodybuilders and they film for their like competitions and coaches. One of my girlfriends films too. So I don't really feel uncomfortable anymore, but at first I did. And I, you know, dealt with the stairs and everything. And 
I feel like for me it was just kind of keeping my headphones in and just filming and blocking it out I have a tripod that I bring to set up my phone on and I literally just set up my tripod I'm in my zone and I do my thing and I'm like honestly when you realize it like yeah people look at you because it's a little weird you know someone out with a camera and they're recording people are kind of like hmm okay interesting you know normally don't see that especially if you live like in a smaller town or a place where a lot of people like you know don't record and influencers like aren't really a thing i feel like it's more normalized in like la san diego because that's where a lot of influencers are or it's very known for that but i'm from a small town so it was kind of weird at first but i kind of just like i said put headphones in zoned out didn't really worry about anyone else was thinking it's just you know people are going to stare for the first you know five minutes or so and then they're going to go back to their workout and they're going to go back to what they were doing and they're not focused on you so do your thing record your workout and don't worry about what people think Next question is, how are you able to invest into your business at such a young age? So I have always been very good with saving. Um, I've always been a saver. I got my first job at 16. I worked two jobs all throughout high school from 16 to age 18 when I graduated. When I went to college, I worked a job, sometimes two jobs. I always had a stable income and I worked in the restaurant industry. So I would normally just like spend my checks and save my tips or vice versa. And I've just always saved ever since I've been young. I've just, you know, loved having an abundance of money in a savings account and being able to like look at it and just be like, wow, I'm saving that for a house or I'm saving that for college or I'm, I have a goal that I'm saving it for. Um, so like I said, my school was pretty much paid for, um, you know, with financial aid and a little bit of loans and some grants. So all the money that I was saving from, you know, work and stuff, I would, um, Put it into a savings and when it came time to start my business i had a little bit of a savings chunk to invest in my business and that's kind of what i did and i did have a budget that i didn't want to go over i had x amount of money that i wanted to spend on product or x amount of money that i wanted to invest into this section of my business and i just was very good about budgeting like i said i've always been very good with saving money and budgeting and things like that i'm very mindful about my money and my income so being able to have that money set aside was really how i was able to invest and actually start my business so i'm going to be using my concealer which is the NARS concealer. What is this color in? Um, the color light. So this is the concealer your girl's gonna be using under her eyes. Um, so next question is, has anyone who ever bullied you in high school apologized for it? So good question. Um, and the answer is no, actually. Um, I don't think anyone who's bullied me has apologized. I definitely have had like my bullies. Cause I, I, had, a, I had multiple bullies. Like I was bullied when you know, I started YouTube at a young age and I feel like social media was really blowing up when I was like in elementary school and middle school. And I got cyberbullied a lot. And cyberbullying wasn't really, I guess, a, a thing or really known until I got a little bit older, but I was cyberbullied. So people would, you know, make fake accounts and bully me. People would bully me on their real accounts. You know, I get bullied at school. I tell this story all the time and I'll never forget. I made a tampon video when I was, I think, 14 years old. And it was just a video on how to put in a tampon. It was not graphic. It was just explaining how to do it. And everyone was bullying me and thought that was like the worst thing ever. And I got called names like a whore, a slut for showing how to use a tampon. Like there's nothing wrong with a tampon. And there was just this controversy that like you're a whore or you're a slut if you use a tampon, which is not accurate at all. That is totally wrong of people to say that. But I got bullied for it. And people would, you know, call me names. And it got to the point where I literally took the video down. And it got hundreds and thousands of views. But I took it down because I was bullied so bad. And I was so, like, embarrassed by it and how people were, like, being mean to me. I remember my first day of high school, I had this girl come up to me. And she literally asked me to sign her tampon in front of all of her friends. I was a freshman, she was a junior, and she asked me to sign her tampon in front of all of her friends. And like literally in my face, I just like turned white and I wanted to just like shut down and cry because I was so embarrassed. And it's like, why were people so mean to me? Like, I genuinely don't know. And now it's kind of funny because people will sometimes like message me and, hey, remember me? We went to high school together and I have really bad PTSD from that. Um, you know, people, I used to be out and about in public, you know, with my mom or, you know, with my friends and we'd be at the mall and people would just yell out like, Maddie Dittler's a slut or like Maddie Dittler tampon girl. Like I was bullied extreme. And you know, now whenever I'm out and about and people recognize me or people, you know, come up to me and are like, hey, oh my gosh, you're Maddie or, or people are staring at me. That's a big thing too. People are like looking at me and they recognize me. And at first it was very hard for me not to like get very defensive and be like, what are you looking at? You know, cause I'm, I'm a very, 
I'm a very defensive person now after being bullied so long. It definitely made me have tough skin. It's shaped me into who I am today, but I'm very quick to, I guess, defend myself and it's very traumatizing when people are just like staring at me because I think, oh my gosh, they're gonna call me tampon girl or oh my gosh, they know me from my YouTube videos or oh my gosh, they're gonna make fun of me and call me a slut or post on Twitter, they saw me out and about doing this and then it's gonna get 200 retweets and everyone's gonna start talking about it on the internet. Like there were times where I was literally afraid to go to school and I have definitely gotten to the point now where I'm like, it's okay and if people look at you in public, it's okay. Like. I cannot be defensive. I cannot attack people. I can't ask them what they're looking at. I need to just realize that, you know, people notice me and that's okay. Um, and so it's definitely taken something that's been kind of hard to get used to. And I definitely have talked to my therapist about it, but I still have that PTSD and something that's very triggering. And same for my mom. I was actually listening. We were listening to Whitney Simmons podcast together. And like, there were points where she had to turn it off because it was so triggering to her to hear like, the things people would say to Whitney on the internet or the accounts people would make and the things that they would attack her about. And it was very triggering for my mom because my mom watched me, you know, as a 11 to 17 year old get bullied daily and, you know, have to watch your child go through that. Like I would never wish that upon anyone. And I would never want another parent to, you know, go through experience and watch their kids go through what I went through. Um, but to answer your question, no, um, no one has ever apologized. Like I said, people will message me and they'll try to be friends with me or sometimes they'll, I've had them buy my product before and more power to them. Thank you for the support. Um, I'm not one to hold grudges and I feel like I'm a very forgiving person, but I'm forgiving for my mental sake. And I forgive those people who bullied me for my mental health. And at the end of the day, I know I'm a better person because of it. I'm a stronger woman because of it, but I will never, I guess, in a sense, become friends with them. And I mean, if they apologize, thank you. I appreciate it. I accept your apology, but I would not ever associate with them because it was just such a traumatizing time for me that I just wouldn't want to have flashbacks and experience that again. So next question is actually going to be a piece of advice and it is busy healthcare worker, 12 to 16 hour work days, workout slash fitness recommendations. So obviously I've never worked like a healthcare job where I'm, you know, working extensive hours. Um, also using the Too Faced, chocolate soleil bronzer um but i feel like finding a routine like finding a schedule that works for you like if you're working 12 to 16 hour days it, i don't know obviously the schedule and you know shifts that you go in but you know finding that time to take that time for you and your mental health whether that is waking up a little bit earlier so you can get up and enjoy your breakfast and drink some coffee and go to the gym or that means going to the gym after work and just sacrificing you know that little bit of time that you get at home to you know sit and watch netflix or you know do something like that you can use that time to go to the gym and you know work out and do something like that um, but i definitely feel like making a schedule and prioritizing that time for yourself and setting that time aside and you know, okay, every morning I'm gonna wake up at four o'clock and go to the gym at 4.30 because I have work at six o'clock in the morning. Things like that, I mean, when I was in college, that was the biggest thing for me and even now, I mean, I wake up at six o'clock every morning and I'm like, okay, six o'clock I wake up, I know I have this, 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 and this to do and then the rest of my day, I can enjoy whatever I want to do or I can do this or I can go to work or something like that. So definitely prioritizing your time, scheduling it out and planning a time for you to work out, especially when you have a busy schedule, you have to plan, you have to plan things. You can't just magically wake up one day and go to the gym. It has to be planned in your schedule because of how busy you are. And planning is like my biggest advice and I still swear by it. And I, I swore by it in college and I still swear by it now. Planning things out ahead of time is key. Next question is actually um, a question that I've literally gotten so many times. It is, how frequently do you wash slash condition your hair when you work out regularly? You work out five times a week and I'm just wondering how you do it. So I, like I said, I work out four to five times a week. I only wash my hair about two times a week. My hair actually needs to be washed tomorrow. It's looking pretty greasy, but I live off of dry shampoo. I will literally do my purple shampoo, wash my hair, condition it, and then I will go in with my like serums and stuff that I put in my hair, let it air dry, and then I normally style it the next morning, whether that's straightening it or curling it, and then that will last me for my four days, three to four days that I don't wash my hair until I wash it again, I will wear it styled. I'll wear it straight, I'll wear it curled, or sometimes I won't do it and I'll just wear it up because I know I'm gonna be working out and not you know, doing any content or anything or going anywhere. Um, but dry shampoo is how I really get through in between washes and things like that. 
Um, I also use, I think it's argan or Moroccan oil. I use to like smooth out my hair in the frizzies and make it look a little more freshened and alive. But dry shampoo is my, I swear by it. I can't live without it and it's just what helps keep my hair alive. So then I'll be using some blush. This is the mocha blush. I've had this forever. It's actually from MAC. So I'm just going to be putting this on my cheeks. And your girl loves some blush. So next question is going to be how did you go from a toxic relationship to a healthy relationship? So as some of you guys may know, I was in a toxic relationship off and on for about four to five years. Um, and when my ex and I broke up, I was so brainwashed that I was like devastated. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to live without this person? I don't know how to be without him. Like I depended on him for four to five years and I was so brainwashed. And then once we broke up and I was like a month into breaking up, I was like, oh shoot, like I can do this. Like I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing better. Like I feel healthier mentally I just feel in a better state without him and I was able to really take that time that we were broken up and in between meeting my new boyfriend who I'm with now um I took that time in between to really reflect and think okay how toxic really was this and what were the things that I didn't like and what were the things that I I would want another man or what are the things that you know were huge red flags in that last relationship you know I'd look at things where I'm like okay this this and this are a red flag and I absolutely do not want that in another relationship and i'm going to look for that when i'm out you know meeting new people and i'm you know getting into a new relationship i'm going to look for those red flags like things that triggered me and were red flags in my last relationship were just off limits to me and i knew like i wanted the simple things like i wanted a man who supported my business i want a man who would value spending time with me after work and you know making dinner with me or things like that someone who appreciated the little things that i did for them you know like you know, doing their laundry or putting the laundry away and just little things like that because it shouldn't be expected of you. You should do it because you want to or you you love them and you care for them and you want to help them out. And so when I met my boyfriend who I'm with now, um, as you guys know, Jacob, I he came into my life when I was least expecting it. Like I was not looking for a relationship. I was enjoying being single. I'm going to turn this a little bit, but I was enjoying being single. I was enjoying, you know, learning how to love myself again and learning how to be alone and just you know learning about what I wanted in a future relationship and you know learning the things that I needed to work on and things like that and he just happened to pop up into my life and he had gotten out of a toxic relationship too and we happened to just you know it just started off by talking we didn't want anything serious and it quickly turned into that because we clicked so well and he was everything I was looking for and I was everything he was looking for and I am such a strong believer and everything happens for a reason and things will happen when they are supposed to like someone will come into your life when you are least expecting it like you may be getting out of a toxic relationship now and thinking I'm never going to find anyone as good as this person or this is all I'm worthy of or this is all I deserve and I promise you when you are least expecting it you are going to find someone someone is going to walk into your life and they are going to be everything you ever could have imagined, everything you ever could have wanted. And you will look back and just be like, why did I ever settle? Or why did I ever put up with the crap that I put up with? Because I'm being treated so great right now. So be patient, work on yourself, find self love, list out those things and reflect on those things in your past relationship that you don't want in a future partner and the things that you do want in a future partner that your last partner lacked and things like that. And I think self development and really taking that time to reflect is key when you are getting out of a toxic relationship or just any relationship in general. Next question is going to be another advice question. What's your opinion on long distance relationship? 6,766 miles. Now, I am such a strong believer in someone comes into your life for a reason. And like I said, everything, what's meant to be will be. And if it's meant to be, it will be. And if you truly love this person and this person reciprocates that love and they are everything that you look for in a partner and you know, they are kind, they are caring, they do this, this, and this, and that's what you want in a partner and you value that. I think long distance can work. And I think that if you both want it and you both put in that effort and you reciprocate that energy and you both equally want it, you know, he wants to be with you as much as you want to be with him and you both are willing to do that distance, then it is totally worth it. I think you should do it. Where, you know, my last relationship, it was like I said, it was very toxic, but we did do distance for a while when I was in college. And, you know, there was times where he didn't want to do distance and I would literally sit there and beg him. And you should never beg someone. You should never beg someone to be with you. You should never beg someone to do, you know, anything. But I was so 
brainwashed and manipulated and convinced that I needed this person that I was like, oh my gosh, I couldn't imagine not doing distance. And you know, there was a time where I considered moving home because he wanted me to move home and, you know, go to school closer to him and go to school with him and live with him. And, you know, he almost had me convinced to do that. And I think that if you both equally want it and you both are willing to put in the efforts and reciprocate that energy, then I think long distance can work, but you both have to want it and you both have to want to work on it. It can't just be a one way street. Next question is going to be advice on taking care of your mental health. Now, mental health is something that I've always been very closed off about. I haven't really talked about it very much on my page, but I feel like now that I'm older and I'm just starting to get more open about it and I'm open to talking about mental health and things like that. Um, my mental health is definitely something I've struggled with and I feel like I really started struggling with it when I went to college. And I didn't start taking action with it until recently. So, um, advice for mental health, finding a routine and finding things that you enjoy. For me, the little things like my morning coffee and walking my dog every morning and my morning journaling are things that just make me feel so good and set a good tone in my morning. Like if I wake up early, you know, like I said, I wake up at six every morning. If I wake up and I drink my coffee and I do some work and then I take my dog on a long 30 minute walk, like that is my time to enjoy my life. And it just, my time alone, like I literally put my phone in my pocket, I turn on a podcast and I don't check my phone. Like podcast, headphones in, walking my dog for 30 minutes, we go to the park, we play, we do all of those things that I love because I'm not worried about anything else other than that. And I feel like that is so key and so helpful and has been so beneficial to my mental health. Like it's the little things for me that really do it. Um, therapy too, I've been going to therapy for about two months now and I swear by it, it is one of the best things that I've ever done and you don't think that trauma carries on but I start realizing like oh this this and this from my childhood are triggering things now and how I you know have relationships now and how I function with confrontation and new relationships and friendships like that everything all ties together and it really becomes eye-opening so therapy is key I love it. I think everyone should try therapy. I think everyone should at least give it a try. It's not for everyone, but I think everyone should give it a try. And it's so helpful. And like I said, finding a routine and just things that make me happy. Like whether that's reading 10 pages of the book every day, or that is going out on a run every day by yourself. Little things like that, self-care and things that make you genuinely feel good are just key to having a healthy mental state. Next question is how do you budget? So when it comes to budgeting, I'm also filling in my brows, guys. Sorry, I don't know if I can do this on camera. Um, but I'm filling it in with the Goof Proof Brow Pencil. I'm gonna do this off camera, and then I'm gonna come back on and answer this question because eyebrows are like impossible for me to do on camera. Okay, I'm back. As I was saying, um, answering the question in regards to budgeting. So for me, like I said, I always have a savings, and I just know that every single month, at the end of the month, I set out my budget plan for the following month. So for example, I have X amount of money I set aside for taxes, I have my money for rent and bills set aside, and then I have my money that I'm going to spend on things like food, groceries, and you know, things that I want to spend it on. Like, okay, I wanna go on a little, you know, weekend vacation this weekend, or okay, I want to go to this concert or do something fun this weekend or something. I have my fun money, I have my taxes money, and then I have my responsibilities and budget money, and then I have my money that I put aside for savings. So, you know, saving to buy a house or savings to buy a new car or savings for, you know, an investment or something. I have my savings that I put money aside for too, and I feel like having a certain amount of money that I set aside every month for different categories helps keep me like organized and you know in budget and everything i also make a business plan and i check up on it quarterly so every three months i check up on it so at the beginning of every year i have a plan okay i have this launch this launch this launch i want to launch this product and this is the amount of money that i want to spend on the entire year and then you know i try to break it up okay for this quarter i want to spend this amount of money on product and for this quarter i want to spend this amount of money 
obviously things change and when it comes to you know shipping increases and things like that things change so maybe on this quarter I'll have to spend a little bit less money and not get as much product so I can have more product for my next launch or I can have a quicker shipping time and things like that and just really budgeting out things quarterly and having a business plan is just most helpful for me especially since I don't have any help with finances I don't have a financial advisor um, I have an accountant but when it, I like to really be in control of my money and know what I'm doing and be able to have that you know good spending habit and good saving habit so definitely that is my biggest tip that helps me whenever it comes to budgeting so I'm gonna do my mascara a little bit on camera too um, I'm using the it cosmetics hello lashes mascara this one is like gonna be out soon so your girl's gonna have to get a new mascara but I also put the this bronzer right here on my eyelids I don't really wear eyeshadow unless I'm going out so um or like going out to like an event or photo shoots or something but just for everyday look I literally just put this all over my eyelids give a little bit of color and things like that I also curled my lashes and put on the Urban Decay eyeliner underneath on my lower lash line that's pretty much it I oh shoot poked myself I don't really wear too much eyeliner or anything or eyeliner on my top lid I normally try to go for a pretty natural look and then I normally just put a little bit of lip liner on. This is the NYX Cosmetics Lip Pencil in the color Natural. Um, I just like a little bit of color on my lips just to make them look a little bit better. I do have lip injections, but I get um, foundation all over them. So I like to add a little bit of color just to make them look a little bit better. Okay, so that is pretty much it for the lip liner. And then lastly, I go over with the Modern Labs Instant Plump and Protect Lip Therapy. It has SPF 30 in it. It's also a lip plumper. I get this from my lip doctor or my cosmetic doctor who does my lip injections. This is like my fourth one. I freaking love this stuff. It just feels so smooth on, but it like doesn't give that like stinging plumping effect. So I love this. I'll also link it down below if you guys want to check it out since my lip doctor does have his own like skincare line. So you guys can check this out. But this is like my go-to stuff every single day. I literally just put it all over a little bit of color and that is it. Oh, and then I go in with the Morphe setting spray just to set my face. That is pretty much it for your girl's everyday makeup routine. It's nothing too special, nothing, you know, glamorous or anything. This is just what I do. Um, and I don't wear makeup every day. I literally wear makeup like maybe once a week. So on the days that I decide to do my face, this is the look that I'm going for. Okay, and to answer the last question for you guys, it is going to be what to do if your ex comes back. So I think there is a multiple approaches that you can do to this, and I think it just depends on the circumstances so obviously if your ex was toxic and the relationship was unhealthy and you know like like I said if it's a toxic relationship and you know that they're not good for you but it's just that that feeling of like you feel like you can't be without them and you need them and you feel like you can't do any better and you just you're settling and you know that oh you're just gonna be with them because you've been with them forever and it's comfort and you're settling then no don't go back um block them on everything <laughs> you don't want contact you don't want them to, be able to reach out to you or anything because it's how they get in your head that's how they convince you to get back with them or to stay with them so if it's any of those circumstances then no i would say block them and keep focusing on yourself girl don't worry about them block them on everything don't let them have contact with you and just continue on your self-growth journey and your self-love journey now i do think there are circumstances where the person is your person and you absolutely love them and you can't imagine your life without them but it's right person wrong time and that may be you are going through something you know mentally or you you know you're struggling with depression anxiety or maybe you're just you need to just grow a little more and work on yourself and then be in a relationship then i think it's okay to get back into a relationship with someone once you are both ready once you have both worked on yourself and have came to that agreement and set those boundaries and you know you both are ready to be together and be in a healthy relationship then yes i think it's okay like i said i'm a believer in everything happens for a reason and if someone's your person then i think yes that it's okay to you know go back to that ex or whatever um like i said right person wrong time i believe is a thing so if you need time to grow and work on yourself and then be in a relationship with that person then go for it or if you are dealing with 
your own struggles, your mental health, and you just need some time to be alone and deal with that. And then when you're ready, go back to that person. And if they're ready and things like that, and it's a mutual agreement, then I think, yes, it's okay to get back with the next. But I definitely think it depends on the circumstances. Um, and obviously you are the one to decide the circumstances and what you will allow and what you won't allow. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I hope I got to answer some of your guys' questions. If you guys want to see more of these videos, then definitely give this video a thumbs up and comment down below letting me know you guys enjoyed it and I will definitely do more of these. Make sure to go follow my Instagram account. This is where I do all of the Q&As and where I let you guys know to ask me the questions and I will be answering them on my YouTube channel. Um, I love doing videos like this. It's so fun to just sit down and chit chat with you guys. So thank you so much for joining in and hope you guys have a fabulous week and I will see you guys in next Sunday's video. Bye guys.